And our next guest is an incredibly talented worship leader and songwriter. She recently released her first full-length album called Psalm Songs, which was inspired by one of the Bible's most beloved books. However, Melanie Waldman's past can be described as anything but beloved. In fact, an invisible darkness even began to once torment her, one fueled by a childhood full of lies and violence, addiction, abuse, abduction, and rape. A darkness so consuming that it almost led her to taking her own life. What happened to Melanie next can only be described as miraculous. Melanie, thank you for joining us here on Hope Today. Thank you so much for having me. Before we get into your, your personal life story, tell me about your love for music and where did your music story begin? At camp, um, I do want to tell you my story of where I met Jesus, but that's really where I started singing, singing the beautiful songs of God. And he gave me a gift of music. I used it for many decades uh, for my own glory. And when I found my way back to the Lord, eventually, of course, I started using the gift for his glory. Melanie, take us back and tell us about your story because you're living this life now as an overcomer. I want to hear uh, back when you were a child. Yeah, so I was the youngest of six and my parents had both been abandoned by their biological fathers. Both of them were not walking with the Lord and they had six children kind of consecutively. So by the time I was seven or, yeah, around seven, I was in a home with four adult men who were not following the Lord, um, using drugs and alcohol. There was violence and um, lots of emotional abuse. So just to paint that picture, um, again, at that very young age, I was taken on a motorcycle and, you know, had an accident, was third degree burns and thrown in the trash. One of my brothers had shot the other one. There was a knife fight between my mother and my brother. And it was just very, very dark um, time. Lots of statues in the house. And that's really how I remember it. Very dark. But somehow in the midst of that, um, my sister got to choose a camp for the youngest three to go go to. And it was um, a small ad. It had a little sailboat with a cross on it. And that summer we went to Camp Good News. Um, and I learned that there was light when all I had known was the darkness. And um, when I came back from camp that summer, our house had burned down all the way to the ground. And all of us moved into a motel. And it was around this time that I was taken. I was um, taken from, I'm not even sure, I don't have a full memory of it, but taken into a car and I was raped mm -hmm. um, and was let go really by convincing that I wouldn't tell. Because if I had told anyone, you know, he promised that he would kill my mom or kill me. So that's kind of the picture of my childhood. Melanie, it almost seems like too much trauma to even bear. How did it affect your life? So my faith didn't, I didn't walk by my faith. I um, saw what my family was doing and I said, I don't want to be like that. So I didn't use drugs and alcohol, but I chose striving. And that event that I described to you in the car, it really marked me. And I thought I was my own savior. I thought I had to be responsible for my own uh, saving, basically, in, in every situation. So be, took a great deal of control um, in my life and used the, the gift of music to um, try and become this perfect person. And what that looked like in my teens and as I grew was... If I had a, you know, if I performed well that day, either through music or in any scenario with my friends and lots of fake fronts, my, you know, people, no one really knew me because I was not telling anyone what was really going on. 
I'd never told anyone about the abduction. And um, yeah, so I just had to be perfect. If I wasn't that day, it was pretty crazy and borderline suicidal. What would you say to somebody that's watching right now that is in such a dark time and maybe feel like, is there any hope for me today? There absolutely is hope. Whatever you're going through, in, in many ways I've been there. I've been in those places of darkness. I've had such traumatic um, and things you would never want to happen to anyone happen to me. Um, but we are never alone. And the Lord is with you. You have a best friend. And for example, in the car that I told you about, I was healed later and I'll tell you about my deliverance. Um, but I was trapped in the, that moment. So if you've been through a trauma or multiple traumas, Oftentimes we can feel trapped by those moments and we can begin to believe things about ourselves that just is not true. Right. The world has this way and the enemy does have this way of uh, getting us to believe these lies about ourselves. And so the lies that I was believing about myself is that I'm worthless, that the sum total of life is loss that there is no one to be trusted. And this is not true. You might have those same lies um, going on in your mind. It's not true. And so I would say what we say in scripture is just take captive those thoughts and fix your mind on the word. Um, but I'd also say just realize that there's so much more than what you can see today. So hold on and talk to someone and reach out and, um, I, I need you to believe me that the Lord is good and he is with you and there are brighter days. So, so tell us, Melanie, what did that healing, how did that healing take place in your life and, and what's that like today? What is it like for you to walk through life today? Yeah, so it took a long time. It took decades of hitting a rock bottom as we kind of, you know, say, and I finally came to a place where I had given up everything, including my son. After many, as an adult, um, many abusive relationships, physically abusive relationships, marriage, um, sexually abusive relationships, really perpetuating that darkness because I believed the lies. The, the lies that I believed became what dictated my life. And so the outcome was always loss. And um, I finally did come to a place, the Lord brought me to a place where I just gave up everything and I wound up renting a house next to three churches. And I joked today saying that God wasn't gonna take a chance this time. Uh, I just started rolling out of bed and attending the morning service. And the songs and the messages started to remind me of this memory I had of Jesus as a child and the Lord that I had met and that I had prayed and gave my life to as a child. And he just slowly started wooing me and drawing me in. He did it in many different ways through the word. The more I would read the word, the more I'd want to read the word. Um, I'd spend time around people who had faith and that encouraged me. And so that when I wasn't with them or I wasn't reading the word, it still stayed with me. And so there was about eight years of perpetual, I would say, moving in closer to the Lord to get to know him and to, to allow like who he is um, kind of fall on me, if you will, and just really take on who he is as opposed to what the world put on me. And so I would say there was about eight years of that. He used music. You know, I got put on a worship team and then I was asked to lead worship for a recovery ministry. And it was there at this recovery ministry that I learned about boundaries and how to look for red flags. And I was putting all of that in place and I was making better decisions, but I was still finding myself back to that same place, always attracting very harmful men and kind of relationships, somehow trying to become first before Jesus, kind of getting in between me and Jesus. 
And I went to my pastor at a, after a period of time where I kept on hearing about John 10, 10, which was what you had said earlier in this, in the program, which is, um, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come so that they may have life in the full. And so sometimes we hear these messages over and over again, and I was hearing them in songs and in sermons and in conversations that there is this great, great fullness. And so I said to my pastor, I said, you know, I want that fullness. I still feel bound. And he recommended a place I went called Restoring the Foundations. And it was there that I received um, an entire a, a deliverance is all I can say. And the person you see before you today is not the same person. I, um, I was released from the abduction. The, the blood of Jesus washed it all off of me. So I no longer carry that. And I have entirely new beliefs that were given to me through the Holy Spirit and revelations, like Amy said, of who I am. And so where there were these lies, they're now replaced with truth. So I am a precious child of God, perfectly and wonderfully made. And God wants me to be happy and full of the love of the Father, being fully who he created me to be. And I'm safe in him. And I can choose to face reality looking through his eyes, seeing what he sees, meditating on his righteousness. I can do all of that through Christ. And so today I live in complete abundance because that's my belief. I, I, I have faith in the Lord and what he says about me. And so the decisions I make are based on those truths. And as you can imagine, a life built on those lies looking dark, a life built on truth is beautiful and light. And so, of course, there are still regular trials. Life is not easy and there's still temptations and there's still traps. And But I have the Lord with me and nothing will come in between me and the Lord anymore. Melanie, I just so appreciate everything that you're sharing from your heart as a trauma survivor myself and just hearing the freedom and the deliverance and the wholeness that when you walk through that journey, when you talk with God and when you lay it all down because it can be so painful at times, it's like going through, but just how Jesus breaks those shackles, breaks that shame so you can walk in wholeness and in freedom. And I just wanted to ask, you know, was there a moment when, you know, you have this beautiful gift of singing, was there ever a moment when you were at your lowest or just when you were feeling that freedom or just the, that the bondage being lifted off of you, that there was a song that you would even sing to yourself in those moments that just really made you feel whole and free? Yeah, he gave me new songs to sing. Uh, and as the scripture says, hymns of praise for God. So as I slept, he would send me new songs. And um, if, if, we're, if you're meaning like specifically from scripture, um, Psalm 139 that I'll share with you later, a song I wrote based on that, just explains that we're never alone. Um, the scripture that spoke to me, um, of course, is Psalm 40, where he lifted me from the mud and the mire, and he set my feet on solid ground. And he gave me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise. And so, yes, I, I would sing about um, just how he, he was never alone and that I was in his shelter and in his protection, always, even in those dark times.